there's a person we're looking to hire. Boy, this could apply to both for-profit and non-profit. Let's see what awaits. And although she has a consistent work history, her references are three to five years old. They're not very favorable, but she presented herself very well in the interview. Which one should I trust, the interview or the references? Wow, anybody, has, has anybody on this call been in that position, rock in a hard place? You know, you're interviewing someone. Um, I know that a lot of the people who view these videos are employers themselves. Um, most of the clients that we work with are probably, some of them have HR personnel or people tasked with HR duties. Some of them are a little bit too small still to be working with real live HR departments, you know, with the head and management and frontline people. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm certain that a lot of people who are viewing this video either live or after the fact have, have been in these shoes. What do you, what do you trust? I mean, the consistent work history is there. I get that. I'd like you to consider this. First of all, don't forget the point of references. The point of references is to decrease your risk. And so if the references are not favorable, and, and I'm hearing in the fact pattern here, several references are not favorable, we have a pattern. Now, if you want to say, well, you know what? A person can change in three to five years. I have two thoughts about that. First of all, yeah, you know what? People are not fixed. We are fluid, we evolve, we change. Except we accountants, we're not allowed to change. We're, you know, we're like the same forever. We're, we only change kicking and screaming. No, all right, that's, that's enough poking at my profession. Um, people change, and I get that you want to allow for that. On the other hand, why do you ask for references in the first place? Why? As Fidelity Investments says, <laughs> because you want to look at, actually, the Fidelity Investments, that's the opposite. They say, Past performance is no indication of future performance. Maybe a person is more like an investment. Um, but here's the bottom line as I see it. A, yes, people change, but B, with more than one unfavorable reference, you have yourself a pattern that is worrying. But three, allowing for the fact that people change. Here's rubber meets road right here. Were the unfavorable references because of hard skills or soft skills. Doug Brown of a company called Paradigm Associates. I met him uh, years ago at the New Jersey Accounting Business and Technology Show. And he taught me about something that management consultants use called the cash box. That's cash with a K because it's an acronym. Cash, it stands for knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. And when you arrange the letters, now, such that knowledge and skills are in one column and attitudes and habits are in the other column, right, the cash box. What he shared with me is that people are typically hired for knowledge and skills. But when a person leaves an organization, whether it's through their choice or, or the employer's choice, it's usually for attitude and habit. So ask yourself this, what is your company prepared to train on? Because knowledge and skills can be trained fairly quickly. But unless your company has skilled personnel who can create a fundamental shift in attitudes and habits, they are not so fast to change. Attitudes and habits are a lot slower to change. And a reference from three to five years ago in the context of attitudes and habits, um, that's not likely to change. But if it's in the context of uh, knowledge and skills, you know what, maybe they didn't have the personnel to invest in training their people. And maybe you do. That's the framework that I would use when, um, when deciding which to trust. People who worked with your candidate or your impressions from an interview. And whether it's a matter of attitude and habit or knowledge and skills.